A lot of people are hardwired to believe that one day they will get married to the love of their lives. Girls dream of their wedding day and perfect husband. Men take it for granted that they will whenever ready marry someone. No one goes into marriage thinking it will fail, but a lot of people go into it unprepared, such that when it fails, they feel lost, disappointed, heartbroken, and they just feel completely dis despondent. They begin asking themselves, why me? Regret, anger, resentment, and bitterness sets in. The feeling of being a failure weighs heavily on their psyche. But that's not what we're focusing on today. Today, my question is simple. Can one find love after a failed marriage? Let's ask my guest. Tolu Afonja is a certified integrative life, relationship, and marriage coach. She has over 18 years experience as an HR professional in various sectors from education, banking, consulting, and coaching. She's passionate about helping individuals and couples achieve happiness, fulfillment, and emotional well-being in all areas of their lives. She's a faculty member and COO of OLCA Coaching Limited and the lead coach with Evolve to Thrive Limited. Welcome, Tolu. I'm actually quite excited to have you here with me. When I posted that you were coming, I got a lot of comments saying, yay, this is going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, so let's delve right in. The most important question is, can you find love after a failed marriage? But first, let's talk about the statistics. Thank you for having me around, um, Sarah. When we talk about failed marriages um, and ability to find love, um, data-wise, what we have now is that about 50% of first marriages since COVID, mm. you know, go into divorce. And this is global. And this is global. Okay. And um, for second time marriages, about 60% of second time marriages have, have failed and gone into divorce now. Mm. So um, with regards to separation, which is what starts the divorce process, there's not much data on that because it's not usually filed, mm. <laughs> yes. But um, we have it now that, especially between the ages of 18 to 50, getting married, right? The first time marriages are, you know, filling at 50% now globally. Well, yeah. Mm. I was gonna say that's a very bad thing, but 50% manageable, I guess. Well, um, if the 50% that failed first time are able to do the work to, <laughs> and are interested, really, the first thing is, are they interested in finding love again to remarry? Mm. You know, then the statistics for second time marriages will probably drop. <laughs> so it's more the second time marriages that's the bigger that problem. That is the bigger problem. Because that means the first marriage failed. Mm -hmm. They didn't do the work. Mm -hmm. Then they entered into the first, second marriage and then it failed again. Mm -hmm. So what do you mean by doing the work? What is this work? I mean, first is, um, are they really interested? Do they want to find love again and do life together with a partner? Because sometimes, most times, after first-time marriages, there's a fear of remarrying. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a fear of going into another relationship mm -hmm. and stay committed in that relationship because mm -hmm. of events and things that happened in the previous relationship, in the previous marriage. Mm -hmm. So um, when it comes to commitment again, to doing life together again with somebody else, what is that level of commitment? We're talking about finding love. You are love first, so you're not going to look for love in somebody else. The first person to love is yourself, and then you can now navigate the terrains of searching for love in somebody else. How do you, you know? do that work? How do you do the work? Yes, how do you begin? You know, what are the practical steps to this self-love and then or that person love? So when we talk about self-love, it's first acknowledging that you're a being and you're worthy of love. Because most times, first time marriages, when it fails, it has, I mean, in the introduction, you say it has an, an effect on the psyche. So what is that effect on the psyche? Mm -hmm. how, how has it affected you negatively? Because you need to get yourself back up again that you are worthy of love. And being worthy of love starts with, I love myself. So coming back to seeing yourself as a being, Mm. And what is it that I really want? And working on yourself mm. based on what your desires, your visions, your dreams, your goals are mm. for yourself, you know, life as a whole. Um, being whole again, 
So let's take, for example, somebody that um, knows that previously in the marriage affected the psyche and um, procrastination was now optimized. I don't understand So that. procrastination, you would not do things at the time you're supposed to be doing them. What does that have anything to do with your marriage? So when we're, when we're looking at marriage, it's an individual that enters marriage. Okay. Marriage is not an entity on its own. So True. when you're looking at the individual, and if before marriage you were somebody that was, um, that was a go-getter, that would do things at the time I want to do things, but then the effect of the marriage failing. Now, whatever the dynamics in the marriage was affected your psyche. And because it affected your psyche, you're no longer passionate and motivated about the things you used to do. So the effect of that on your person as an individual, um, when you really have passions and dreams, you are not activated to take up those activities, responsibilities, and you begin to procrastinate because you have not set yourself up. So the effect of the marriage failing has affected you as an individual. Now when we're looking at self-love, self-love is um, I still want to achieve my dreams. I still want to achieve the things I want to achieve for myself. I'm going to stop procrastinating. The things I used to do, I need to be passionate, motivated about my dreams or whatever it is that I want to do and not allowing the negative psychic of the effect of the marriage on you affect you and you can come back up again. So that is what I mean by um, self-love. Appreciating that you are a wonderful being and that you still have dreams and goals. Marriage is not the end of it. Mm. Marriage does not make you, it's the marriage that failed. You did not fail unless you see yourself as a failure. You know, mm. So getting back up again, being a whole person, activating your dreams and doing all that you desire to do for yourself and just going all out to doing that. So that is where self-love starts from. Mm. Um, loving yourself, having time for yourself, doing that introspection and, um, and just being happy and you're not depending your happiness on another individual. So, I think one of the places that people find the most difficult is that introspection. So, what does that look like? So, a lot of people are first in denial that there's anything wrong with them, right? And they, they, they feel that they are a strong, resilient, and they put the failure of the marriage most times. So, there's the blame game blaming the other party, but not even looking inwards with regards to what did I or did I not do? Mm. What patterns, what behaviors, what attitudes, what was it from my own part that may have contributed, even no matter how tiny the percentage was, because we are all imperfect, nobody is perfect. You know, so that introspection would refer, would, would, come, would, would have you to... Um, do the work. Most times we can't do it by ourselves. So you need to connect with a coach to help you do that. Or maybe a therapist, depending on the intensity of what you're going through. Um, we have blind spots. And most times we don't even know what those blind spots are. In fact, it takes someone else to bring out and say, Oh, Tolu, do you know that you do this when you know somebody does this? And sometimes you're... Um, in the defense, in denial, no, I don't do this, but it's somebody else that is telling you that I have observed or we have observed that this is what you do when this is coming up. You know, so are you going to take that and introspect and say, okay, do I actually do this? Question yourself. You know, introspection comes with being curious about yourself. You know, um, so if this person says I do this, you know, um, I need to be aware the next time it's happening. Is it actually, am I actually doing it? Or am I projecting? It's just like saying, um, Farron, do you know that you shout when you're talking to me? And Farron says, no, I don't shout. I only raise my voice. But the effect on me, what I feel is that you shout. But you're on the defense saying, no, I don't shout. So if that's where the introspection comes in. So you hear that and then you come back and think about it. That Do I really shout? Or you ask other people that are close to you. Do a SWOT of yourself. You know, what are your strengths, your weaknesses? Just look at, ask questions. But it's coming from the place of curiosity about yourself. It's not about taking everything down that, ah, this person says I'm a liar, so I'm a liar. This person says, no, it's not about taking everything in. But introspection comes with, um, if you are projecting something and your attention is called to it, what are you doing about it? Are you curious to find out, oh, okay, 
what could have caused this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes assessments also help with this, taking psychometric assessments, other assessments to understand what is going on within you. It brings out some form of clarity and awareness about yourself that you probably don't know. Sometimes could a person be in denial such that they don't even want to do that level of introspection? Yes, I started with that saying that mm. we're all we're, we're sometimes in denial. Yeah. So even when your attention is called to it, you deny it. You're on the defensive and you just brush it apart and continue to do life the way you want to do life. Is that okay though? Well, it depends on what you desire for yourself. So if you don't care and you're not doing anything about yourself and yet you still have dreams, goals about yourself or marriage or whatever it is, you are sabotaging that process for yourself. Mm. So it's always, I mean, I always say, um, know you. Nobody else can know you the way you know you. You should know you. But then when you're knowing you, knowing you comes from a place of being curious about me. What has been my style, my patterns, my behavior, my language? And what effect is it having on the different connections that I have around me? So when you are sensitive to that, I once upon a time had someone I was working with and she was big in size. And she said something, she said, Tolu, because I know that I am big and my voice is deep, I know that sometimes when I talk, um, it may look as if I am, I am uh, pushing people away from me. And so I infuse humor and fun in my conversations to attract people towards me. That's mm. somebody that is aware, self-aware, mm. not allowing her size to have an effect on her and to withdraw from people. Mm. You know, and the nature of her job was such that would help her that she needed to engage people. Mm. You know, so when I say that, but it's another thing to say, I know I'm aware of this uh, because, of my, because of my size, people don't want to talk to me. And she says that's how I am and continues to go about that. But mm -hmm. what is her goal? Her goal is I want to have meaningful, engaging conversations with the people around me. And so to help that so that she's not sabotaging that goal, she now infuses fun and humor in her conversations, how be it still principled, mm -hmm. so that people will still feel comfortable around her. Okay, okay that, that makes a lot of sense. So if we then bring it back to, I want to find love again. I've done all this introspection. What next? You want to find love again. The first thing is um, you've done your introspection and you desire to find that love again. And you're loving yourself with the introspection. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you're loving yourself with the introspection. Then continue to do that to um, help you to be whole because we keep evolving every day. So in finding love again, it will do, it will be um, activate the, it will be to activate the, the things that you have found out about yourself. So you've done introspection. Okay, I know this. What are you doing about that knowledge? Are you working on that knowledge to help you position yourself to find that kind of love that you desire for yourself? Or that knowledge is just and you're doing nothing about it. Remember, somebody had the knowledge, the example I said before, the knowledge that she knew she was this yeah, size and all, and she did something about it. Yeah. So what are you going to, what are you doing with the knowledge you now have about you? you know, in finding love. Now, you also need to know what your deal breakers are. What is it that, I mean, coming from a failed place and marriage before, what are your deal breakers? What is it that you will not compromise on and what it is that you compromise on? What are the standards that you are setting for yourself? What is it that you really, really want in terms of the dynamics in the relationship? Now, it's not about just marriage. You're going to have a relationship before you go into marriage. You know, so in that relationship, what are you looking out for yourself? there mm. how would you know when what you're calling love is love when it shows up yeah. because love is relative so what is your definition of love and when it shows up would you actually recognize it as okay. love I'm, I'm, okay i'm going to interrupt you because we're we're rounding up but then you've done all of this you've introspected you've looked at your deal breakers you've done classroom and then you go out into the field and then you meet somebody. What then? You meet somebody you're interested in and the person is interested in you. Is it both ways? What about, what about blind spots? Um, 
So blind spots comes with you, blind spots in the other person as well. And that's where in the relationship where you're trying to get to know yourselves, it's a data gathering process. It's an interview process. You're observing, you're looking at, okay, is this something I'm looking forward to? You know, you already have your indices or whatever it is that you have attributed love to be for you. You know, love is not missing, really. If you really, if, if you want to find love, you will find that love, okay? But then you need to know what love means for you so that when you find it, you would realize that, yes, this is love for me. So love is kind, love is patient, love is all the many things that they say it is. But in terms of active, um, tangible measures, what does kindness mean for you? What does, I mean, if that is what you're looking out for, what does um, optimum a, um, communication look like for you? What does um, the person feel that you have a rapport with the person? Mm. What does that look like for you? Because mm. it's really not one cap fits all. And then your blind spot, you know, you can engage help, intervention to help mm. you, um, not just you, but your partner, to be sure that this is what we want to do together again, mm. Mm. right? So mm. you have um, coaches to help you walk through that process. Thank you so much, Tolu. We always run out of time. Um, and I think we need to unpack this conversation even more. I think we've only just scratched the surface. Because I agree with you. Because there are lots of people who still want to know, can I find love after a failed marriage? But the summary of what I think you're saying is, yes, you can, but you first need to do the work on yourself. Yes? Yes, love is not missing. If you want to find it, you find it. But the first place you find it is within you. Awesome, <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, Tolu. Thank you. Um, this, this has been short and interesting and very insightful. So, um, yeah, I hope we all are able to find love again, if that's what we're looking for. Um, Fumi, myself and Helen will very quickly round off the show. So please stay tuned for a few more seconds while we do that. Thank you. <laughs>